This is a system of equation word problem, and I just want us to look. Here are the two equations that are our system. We're going to go back through the problem and just discuss where these equations came from, and then we're going to go through and figure out the questions. So Tamika would like to go fishing at one of two cat farms close to her home. Floyd's catfish charges a $5 fee plus $2 per pound. Which equation is that? The first one. Let's put next to it Floyd. The Miller's Cat Farm does not charge a fee to fish, but they do charge $3 per pound of fish caught. So this is $3 per pound, and that makes this the second equation in our system. The question then is, when is the charge the same? And we're going to use substitution to practice today, but I just want to review here. We have let statements. It's really important when you're solving word problems for systems that you identify what your variables are really clearly because they're going to become part of your answer. We will be figuring out the cost per pound and the total cost as we work through these problems. But the real thing is we're going to figure out when is the charge the same for these two farms. Okay, so sorry my copies turned out kind of icky yesterday, but this says in this box, solve for a single variable because that's the first thing we need to do with a system that we use substitution. Both of these are already solved for what? So T is already isolated. So I'm going to take the first equation and I'm going to write it here. <coughs> T is equal to 5 plus 2P. Again at your table, what does the 5 stand for? Tell your neighbors. And what does our 2P stand for? Okay, and then in the second we're going to put substitute and solve in our second box. So we're going to take the second equation. T is equal to 3p. You guys can do this with your pencil, but basically I'm going to take what t was equal to in the first equation and I'm going to go plug it in where the t is in the second equation. Hopefully that's a little bit clearer. So I end up with 5 plus 2p is equal to 3p. I want you to notice here, I love it when systems are like this, where we have two different things equal to a total. We just take those two equations that we first wrote up here as expressions, and we make them equal to each other. Because right now, this is Miller's fish farm, isn't it? Oops, sorry, I did that wrong. <laughs> Not Miller. This is Floyd's fish farm. And this over here is Miller. And our question is, when will the charge for the fish be the same. And when I take those two farms and I make them equal to each other, and I'm solving for P, that's going to be the pounds per fish, I'm going to figure out when it's going to cost the same. Make sense? I told you system word problems wouldn't be that bad. Okay, so we need to solve. 5 plus 2P is equal to 3P. We need to get like terms together, so what am I moving? I want to move the 2P. 5 is now equal to P, because 3P minus 2P is equal to just 1P, which is 1 pound, yes? How much is 1 pound of fish? $5. We now have this, we have to go back to the first equation, and we're going to plug it back in to find the other variable. So the total is equal to 5 plus 2p 
plug in to find the other variable, I'm going to take this 5 and I'm going to bring it down here and I'm going to plug it in for the pounds. Honestly, I could have used either equation. I probably should have used the other one because it's easier, but I wanted to show you a little bit more complex. So I'm going to rewrite this as t is equal to 5 plus 2 times 5. This 5 in parentheses came from us solving this other one for, par for pounds, yes? T is equal to 5 plus 10. The total is equal to? 15. So then we have to think about what does that mean in terms of our question? Here's the statement. Both farms charge $15 for catching five pounds of fish. I'm sorry, I have set up here that this was five per pound and we know that's wrong. One farm charges two dollars per pound and the other three per pound. So, <clears throat> so both farms charge fifteen dollars for catching five pounds of fish. So when you get to five pounds, that's when these two farms are equal. If I was going to catch less than five pounds, which farm should I go to? Miller would be cheaper unless I get up to five pounds. Once I'm past five pounds, actually, Floyd's becomes cheaper. Right? But we didn't figure that out. We can figure that out by looking at it and thinking about it. What we figured out was the question, when is the charge the same? The charge is the same when you catch five pounds of fish at either farm. You're going to pay five bucks or 15 bucks, $15 for five pounds. Okay. Are we less scared of systems word problems now? Turn it over. Oh, it's a t this is such a standard system of equation question. You've got coins in a jar, two different kinds of coins. We know what the total of the coins is. Like we know how many coins are literally in the jar and we know how much money is in the jar. So we're going to write our system about that. So Hannah has $11.20 in a jar. Is that $11.20 important? That contains only nickels and dimes. There are 140 coins in the jar. How many of each coin does Hannah have? This has already been done for us today. We're going to let N equal what? Yeah. And we're going to let D equal? Dimes. And then we're going to say that nickels plus dimes equals 140. Does that make sense in the context of the problem? How many coins total are in the jar? 140. 140. And how many kinds of coins are in the jar? Three. Are they both identified here? Okay. I'd like you to look at the second equation. There's information here you have to know because you just live in the United States. And there's information from the problem. What's the information that got put into this problem because we know this? Five cents for? And? 10 cents for dimes. What part of this came from the problem? The $11.20. Now here's the thing. This has to be written as 0 0.05 because it's a nickel and they're worth five cents. This does not have to have both zeros. Which zero is important? The first one, just to make sure we don't lose the decimal as we're writing this. Why do you think I have this typed in here though? It's to keep in our head that we're dealing with 10 cents. Does that make sense? Same over here. If you type this into your calculator, it would delete the last zero. It would show it as 11.2. Why is it there? Because we're dealing with money, and in money, we deal with two decimal places. Right? Do these two equations make sense to you? Okay. So, let's solve for a single variable. What do you guys want to solve for? N or D? 
N? Okay. Let's solve for N. We're going to take the first equation, N plus D is equal to 140. Why does it make sense to start with the first equation to solve for a single variable? Do the N and the D have any crazy decimal in front of them right now? No. That makes it easier to solve for the single variable. If we're solving for N, we're going to subtract the D. And we get N is equal to 140 minus D. And then I'm going to write the second equation. Write kind of small, the space is small, and you've got all these decimals. And we're going to take this part of the first equation, and we are going to substitute it in for n, which makes this equation look even crazier because we're going to have decimals and we're throwing in an expression from the other equation. 0 0.05 times 140 minus D plus 0 0.10 D equals 1120. I did not do this as my example. I solved for D, so I'm calculating for all of us right now. This is what I'm putting in my graphing calculator. The nickel, oops, I put a plus instead of a times. Okay, I'm putting in a nickel times 140 because I need to distribute this nickel to this and to this. And this is gonna end up being seven. Seven minus 0 0.05 D plus 0.10D equals 1120. And then I have to combine like terms. What are my like terms here? The seven is eventually gonna go over here with the 1120, but before I do that, I wanna combine these two crazy decimal things with the Ds on them and just make it a little bit cleaner. So 7 plus 0 0.05D equals 1120. Talk at your table real quick. How did I combine those two like terms? I took this and this and I put them together. Are you guys with me now? I, sa I saw that I had a dime here, or 0 0.10, 0 0.10, and minus 0 0.05, and I added those together, and I ended up with half of this was this. And now I heard the combined like terms earlier, 7, and I end up with 0 0.05D is equal to, I want to make sure I'm doing this right, I don't trust my brain after being out sick for a week. It's 4.20. And 4.20 divided by 0 0.05 is 84. And what does D stand for? How many dimes does she have? 84. Now, this looks crazy because we were dealing with decimals, but it's really not that difficult if you think about it. We're going to go back to our two original equations, and I love that first. Once I deal with money on these, that, that first messy one where you have to attach the decimal, mm -hmm. the next part is easy because I know how many dimes she has. <coughs> but I don't know how many nickels yet. But here's what I do know. I know that nickels plus dimes equals 140. And I now know that the D is equal to 84. So I'm going to do nickels 
plus 84 equals 140. How do I solve that? Subtract. 140 minus 84 gets us to 56. N equals 56. So here is our solution. Hannah has 56 nickels and 84 dimes. in her jar. With that, there's two more word problems here and I want you guys to work on them as a team. I want you to start on the one next to it first and I'll tell you my reason why. The let statements are there and the equations are there. Turn to the other one. I want you to do the last one where you have to write the equations. Okay? Are we ready to try? Okay. 